In this video, we're going to be making ourselves a mobile app called Hole in One, and it's going to be playable on Android devices. We will be using Adobe Flash to make the app today. And basically, when it's finished, this is what's going to load up on your phone. This is the home screen of the app. The user just has to push the play button with their finger to load up the game. Now, the game is fairly simple. All they have to do is tilt the phone to move this little golf ball. Okay, if they tilt the phone to the left, the golf ball will move to the left. If they tilt the phone to the right, the golf ball will move to the right. And all they have to do is keep tilting their phone until they can get the ball into the hole. So when that ball hits the hole, it will go to the last scene, which says, nice shot, ask them if they want to play again. If they do, they'll just press the button to play again. It's a fairly simple game, and it's not too hard to make this app either. So let's head over and have a crack at making it now. Okay, so when you load up Flash, we're not going to use one of the new documents today. We're actually going to use one of the Flash templates. So pop on over to Templates. We're going to go to Air for Android and use the Accelerometer template today. We're going to let Flash do a lot of the hard work for us. So I'm just going to zoom out and fit that in the window. And basically this app already works. Okay, that green ball, as we tilt our phone around, it's going to move around the page. If I press Control enter I can give you a rough idea of how it's going to work with the phone simulator. Okay, just watch as I tilt this phone, the ball started moving. As I tilt it up and down, the ball starts moving up and down. If I could tilt it left and right, which I don't really know how to do with the simulator yet, you could do the same thing and move it left and right. Okay, Flash has put code in for us to stop the ball moving outside the screen area, so that's a handy little feature to have as well. So I'll close the example now, and we're going to turn this template into our golf app, so our hole-in-one app. To get started, you need to go to your timeline down the bottom here, and we're just going to lock all the layers by hitting that padlock. We don't want to touch all those layers for now, we just want to play with the background layer. So unlock the background layer, and click once on the word background, and that's going to highlight everything in the background. What I want you to do is press delete on your keyboard to remove everything from their background. Go over to your properties panel and I want you to pick a color for the sky which is just a nice light blue color. Now we need to draw a background on for our game here. I'm going to cheat a little bit and open up my um, recent file which was the hole in one game which you just looked at earlier. I'm not going to show you how to draw the background. We don't have time for that in this video, so what I'm going to do is just copy and paste it over. Just like that. So if I just hide the other layers for a minute, that's basically what your background needs to look like. To draw the clouds, use the brush tool. Okay, I made my brush nice and big, made a white color and just drew a few circles on the page. Another tool that I used was the pen tool. So over here we've got the pen tool. I drew the mountains with the pen tool. I also drew the sand trap with the pen tool as well. Okay, you can play with your colors just here. You may need your fill bucket as well to fill in some of the things that you draw. And the last thing, I use the oval tool to draw the green. Okay, So that's basically your background. This stuff is not going to move, so when you're done with it, lock it into place. Now the next layer that you want to play around with is the ball. Okay, that looks nothing like a golf ball at the moment, so our job is to get this ball looking a bit more like a golf ball. So, what we can do, it's already converted to an object. Okay, so if I click on this ball once, it's already got a name, and it's already a movie clip. Okay, so to edit this, you need to double click on it. Once you've double clicked on the ball, it'll take you into isolation mode, and it will allow you to change the ball's color. So I'm going to click on this ball once with my black arrow, go up to my color panel here, and I'm going to make this bright green color white by double clicking on it and selecting white. Now instead of having black here, you can double click on that. Uh, my screen resolution is playing up a bit, so I'm not going to be able to get the color I want. I want a gray color, so I'm just going to drag the levers around until I can get a nice light gray. That's close enough. Okay, so click off the ball, and you can see now that that's a fairly good looking golf ball. It doesn't have the dimples in it, but the colors look pretty spot on. The last thing you need to do is resize this golf ball to make it nice and small. So, to do that, grab your free transform tool from your toolbox, which is the third tool down. Click on your ball once. Now, you don't want to move it, 
you just want to resize it. This little crosshair in the middle must stay over the middle of the golf ball. So holding shift, go to one of the corners and simply drag inwards. Make your golf ball nice and small. Okay, and you can see as I zoom in, that cross is still over the center of the golf ball, which is what we're after. Okay, that is a little bit small. I might even make it a bit bigger. Just a little bit. I'll have to zoom in and do this. There we go. That's not too bad now. I wouldn't go any um, bigger than that. So that's a pretty good size. So I'm going to press the back arrow now to take me back to scene one. And you can see I've got this annoying shadow following the ball. So there's two things you can do here. You can remove the shadow altogether by clicking on the ball, expanding your filters panel over here in your properties panel. And you can click on the drop shadow and just press the minus button, which will delete the filter from it. Okay, that's one option. I don't mind having the filter on there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is click on the ball again once and go back over to my filters here and just adjust some of these settings. The blur X and Y, I'm going to make 5 pixels. The strength of this shadow is going to be 50%. And the distance I'm going to set to about 5 pixels. And just click off that now and you can see you've got this little shadow behind the ball that follows it around. And it looks a lot nicer than the one we had um, just a moment ago. Okay, so that's our ball layer finished. So let's move your ball off to the side for the moment and lock that layer into place. Now the next thing we need to bring into our game is the flag and the hole. Okay, we want to get this golf ball into the hole to win the game. So what we can do is go down to the background layer once there and just click on it and make a new layer above it. So press the new layer icon. We're going to rename that layer to hole. It's basically the target we need to hit to finish our game. And you need to draw for me a flag first of all that looks something like this one. Okay, I'm just going to cheat Oops, and copy and paste it over. So there's the flag. Okay, once you have drawn it, make sure you go to modify and convert it to a symbol. You want to just call it flag and make sure it's a movie clip. Because I've copied and pasted it from my finished document, that's already done for me. Now the other thing that you need to draw on top of that, it's going to be a little bit separate, is the hole. So it's the target that we need to hit. So this little black bit here. So to draw that, I just use the oval tool. And I'll just move that down into position. I'm going to zoom in a bit here to get this right. I want to get it matched up pretty nicely. Okay, so that looks good. Once you've drawn your circle on, which is going to be your, whoops, your hole, I need you to go to modify and convert that to a symbol as well. I'm going to call it hole and make sure the type is movie clip. And click OK. I'm also going to give it an instance name, which I will call hole as well. Okay, and just click off it. So that's how our hole and our flag are going to look. It's in a pretty good position, so I will leave it where it is and just lock it into place for now. Okay, so it's time to get our coding underway. We don't have to do too much coding because Flash has done a lot of it for us. So if you go to your window menu and select your actions box, or press F9 for the shortcut, and go to your actions layer, you can see the code that Flash has already put in to make our ball move around the page. Okay, The first piece of code you need to add is in line number one. So just press enter a couple of times to make a bit of space up the top there. And basically we're going to have three different scenes in this animation or in this app. And this is going to be scene number two. So when it goes from scene one to scene two, we need to tell Flash to stop at scene two here. So the first line of code you need to write is the word stop open and then close a bracket and then put a semicolon in. Okay, so that first piece of code goes on line one. It just says stop, bracket, bracket, semicolon. Easy. That just tells our app to stop when it gets to the game. Now the second thing we need to do is make that when the ball hits the hole or the target there, it's going to go on to the last scene. We haven't made that last scene yet, but we will in a moment. Okay, so what we're going to do is put in some code. 
Let's stretch this box out a little bit. So below all the code that Flush has put in to make the ball move, we're going to go right to the bottom, so about line 35 on mine. I want you to copy this word for word, making sure you put capital letters where I put capital letters, full stops and spaces where I put them. Otherwise, your code will not work. So we need to write down ball dot add capital E event capital L listener. Open a bracket and write event with a capital E dot and then in capitals enter underscore frame. Put a comma space. We're going to write the word target hit. Close our brackets. Put a semicolon in. So ball dot add event listener in brackets event dot enter frame and then target hit. We'll go down two more lines. We're going to write in function target hit. Okay, so we're going to call up a piece of code called target hit and then we're going to put in brackets event colon and then event with a capital E. Close the brackets. Put another colon and write the word void put a space and open up a curly brace or curly bracket. Go down to the next line and then the next line again. Next piece of code we're going to write is if put a space. We're going to write ball dot hit test object and that test object is hole. Okay, so it's basically saying if the ball hits the hole close the brackets twice there Put a space, open up a curly brace again. So when we have the ball hitting the hole, we're going to go to and stop at frame number one in the last scene, which I'm going to call end. So it's going to be the end of our app. Close brackets, put a semicolon, and then just make sure you've got the two curly braces already in for you at the bottom there. So this piece of code is what you need to take you to the very last scene of the animation or the app. So make sure you pause the video and check that very carefully and you've got it in word for word there. No spelling mistakes. Capital letters where I've got capital letters. Okay, I'm just going to hide that code by pressing the double arrows for the minute. And I might even move my actions just over to this panel for a minute. So there's my actions there when I need them again in a moment. Alrighty. So that's that bit working. We can now add the final two scenes into our animation. So I'm going to go to the Window menu and go down to Scene. Press Shift F2 for the shortcut. I'm going to rename Scene 1 here, which we're on, to Game. I'm going to add a scene below it called End. And I want to add a scene above it, so I'll just drag the scene 3 up there and I'm going to call it Intro. So I've got an intro scene, which is going to be my first scene, my first splash screen. Second scene is the game, and the last scene is the end. So what happens when we finish our game? Okay, so let's start with the intro scene. I'm going to do a bit of copying and pasting again. I am going to cheat a little bit. So I'm going back to my finished game already. This is what our intro scene needs to look like. Okay, so it's got a background, which I'm going to copy and just paste in. You need to draw that background for me, okay? You can pretty much copy and paste from the game just here. It's very similar. Okay, I just made my flag and hole a little bit bigger. And I put in some text up the top using the text tool. Okay. The other thing we need to put in is a button. Okay, so you can see the button here. I've basically drawn that with the rectangle tool and put text over the top of it. So better quickly save my background layer and just lock that into place. I'll make another layer called button and I'll paste that in place. Okay, so I'll put my button somewhere down here next to the hole. Now that button needs to be converted to a symbol. Okay, so once you've drawn on the rectangle with the text, highlight all of it, go to modify, convert to symbol, and we'll call it play. We'll call it play game actually. And instead of a movie clip, we'll make it into a button and click OK. Straight away, you want to give it an instance name. I'm going to call it play game. And 
we might put some code straight onto that to make it go to the next scene so we can play the game. So we're going to use code snippets, so the code that Flush has already written for us to get this button working. I'm going to go to my window menu and choose code snippets. And I'm just going to lock that into my toolbar as well just here. So what I'm going to do is click on my play button once and go to the code snippets, open up action script, open up timeline navigation, and basically all we want to do is when we press the play button, we want to go to the next scene and play it. So just double click on that piece of code and up it comes. Okay, so Flash puts in the code for us. Pretty simple. Okay, so I just hide my actions for a minute. I just might move them back down here. One other thing we need to do when we load up our app is we need it to stop at this scene. If we didn't put in the stop code, which I'm going to do right now, so in line number one, make sure you put in the stop code. If we don't put that there, then Flash will automatically go straight to the next scene. It will keep flicking through the scenes until it finds some code to make it stop. So on that intro scene, on your actions layer, make sure you've got stop, bracket, bracket, semicolon as your first piece of code, and then we've got the code snippet below it, so that when we press the play button, it takes us on to scene number two and lets us play our game. And finally, we've got the end scene. I will cheat a little bit here as well. This is how our, our last scene should look. So I'm going to go to the background layer and copy it. And I'm going to paste it in. Okay, you can draw that yourself. It's very simple. Again, we've got all this stuff from the game scene that you can copy and paste over. Just put some text at the top saying, nice shot. Do you want to play again? Okay, so I'll rename that layer to background. I'll lock it into place. And I'll make one more layer above it called button. Now, our button this time is going to say play again. So I'll just copy that and paste it in. Once you've drawn your button, make sure you highlight the rectangle and the text. Go to modify, convert to symbol, and we'll just call it replay. Make sure it's a button. Click OK. Give it the instance name replay. And while we clicked on that button, we're just going to go back to our code snippets and we're going to choose click to go to previous scene and play. So double click that and it will just take us back to the game when we push that button. Okay, so there's the code Flush has written for us that lets us go back to the previous scene. Don't forget in line number one you want to put in your stop code again. So when we get to this final scene it actually stops and doesn't keep playing through to the next scene. So it will stop there first. It'll wait until we press that button. When we press that button, it will take us back to the game. Okay, so that's basically it. Let's just give it a quick test run by pressing Control Enter, and then we'll try and load it up to our phone if everything's working fine. So no errors at this stage. It looks pretty nice. If I press play, up comes our game. And if I just tilt the phone around, we can see the ball is moving around. And we'll test it once it gets onto the phone when it hits the hole, will it go to the next scene? Okay, hopefully it does. So, first thing you need to do, save as. I'm just going to save this onto my desktop, but you can save it into an appropriate folder in your account. I'm going to call it a hole-in-one. After I've saved it, I'm going to go across to my properties here and go to Publish Settings. Now you need to make sure the output file is called hole-in-one.swift. And up the top where it says Target F Android, you want to hit the little Settings button next to that. Make sure your output file is called Hole in One. Your app name is Hole in One. You've got the app ID there is Hole in One. The aspect ratio should be Portrait. You can check full screen if you'd like. Okay, we've set up our app to be pretty much full screen size anyway, but just check full screen if you want. Um, and then go across to the Deployment tab. If you haven't made a certificate yet, create one now and just save it into your account. You always need a digital certificate created when you make these apps. So I've got mine already created, so I'll just type in my password for it. Um, I'm going to change Air Runtime to Embed Air Runtime with Application. If you have icons created for this game, you can load them in now. 
Okay, I haven't created icons for this game. I will show you that in a different tutorial. But you can have special icons when you load it up on your phone or your tablet. Um, we'll leave permissions and languages alone for now. Okay, so that's all good. So I'll press on OK. And I'll press OK again. And if I go to File, I can now publish my app. Okay, so that'll just take a moment. Okay, so there's our message saying that our APK file was packaged successfully. Don't worry about the warning, just click on OK. So if I go to my desktop where I saved it now, I've got this file called holeinone.apk. I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go to my folders and find this PC. Now I've just plugged my Samsung Galaxy phone into my computer and you can see that it has appeared just here. So I'll open that up go into the phone and these are all the folders on my phone I'm going to save my app into my documents folder okay, I've got a previous version of hole-in-one which I will delete and I'm going to paste in the new version of hole-in-one okay so that app is now on my phone I'll just start my camera and we can have a look on my phone at how this works Okay, so I've got my phone here. I'm going to click on the Apps button down the bottom here. I know it's a bit hard to see with the glare, but basically there's a folder down the bottom that says My Files, so I'll click on that. Now inside My Files, I'm going to go to my device storage, and I've got some folders there where I can find the documents. Very hard to see, but there's my whole in one app up the top, which I will click on. Click on. Okay, it asks me if I want to install it. I sure do, so I'll click install. Thinks about it for just a moment while it installs. Once it's done, you can click open down the bottom. Okay, I'll try and get this so it's not too glary for you. <laughs> Basically, there's our hole in one app. If I press play, the ball just drops straight to the bottom of the page. Now, I have to hold the phone flat to be able to play this game. So you're not really going to be able to see the ball move around. Okay, you'll just have to take my word for it that it does move around. I'll try and tilt the camera down so you can see this a bit better. Here we go. Okay, so as I've got the ball in the hole, it says nice shot, do you want to play again? Oops, and you can play again. Okay, so I'll just close off my camera again now. That's basically it. That's how we use the accelerometer to make a hole in one game in Flash. Uh, we've already saved it. It's all packaged up as an app. So that's all I need to show you in this video. Good luck making that.